Hello, this is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 57, I think. Well, it's somewhere close to 57. Anyway, uh, this is part two of two of my review of the MFJ 266 antenna analyzer. This is a picture of it. Uh, part one, I told you uh, basically the the buttons and everything and what they're about and what the analyzer can do and how to use it. Um, and, the, and the key thing is this 10-turn um, pot now that they've added to give you a more precise tuning. So here's what I uh, came up with as far as my inputs. Okay, number one, the MFJ266 antenna analyzer works from 1.5 to 150. 85 megahertz plus it has a 300 to 490 megahertz band which is basically three of the previous MFJ analyzers in one they have they used to have um, an HF analyzer for HF frequency up to 30 megahertz they had a VHS VHF analyzer and they had a UHF analyzer of which I own all three of those. I collected them over the years. And this analyzer replaces all three of those, not only in frequency range, but it does additional functions. So basically it's many instruments in one. It can display SWR, uh, complex impedance, impedance magnitude. It can measure capacitance, inductance, field strength, frequency, plus it can generate test signals. And, something I didn't realize, it can find values for unknown capacitance, measured in picofarads, and unknown inductance, measured in microhenries. As I mentioned in my first uh, part of this presentation, um, it's us the layout is user-friendly. Um, there's only a couple of buttons you have to learn how to use, and after that it's pretty intuitive. The manual that comes with it is pretty understandable. It's um, better than uh, many of the manuals that come from overseas. And um, pretty much goes through all the functions and how to use them. So I, uh, I think the operating manual is usable, understandable. The construction, it's uh, a very rugged aluminum metal case, very thick metal. Um, it's compact. It's smaller than my 259 by about three quarters, about three quarters the size of my 259. And it standard on the meter itself um, is a UHF connector, and they do include uh, the adapter to a 239. It's powered by either batteries or an external adapter. The external adapter is an option. Um, as I mentioned before, installing batteries are a little cumbersome. You have to open the case, which there's four screws you have to take out, and then there's two battery cases, and you insert, insert four AAAs in each of those two cases for a total of eight batteries. And the documentation mentions that you cannot use rechargeable batteries because the uh, at a full charge, the rechargeable batteries only put out 1.2 volts instead of 1.5, and the meter requires a total of 12 volts. There are a couple of accessories that, c that you can buy. One is a dip meter coils, so you can turn it into a band-switched dip meter and you can also buy the AC adapter from MFJ if you don't have your own. And uh, one selling point of MFJ's products is their no matter what the problem is they give you a one-year limited warranty. Okay here's um, here's some testing I did. I did two tests with this MFJ266 analyzer. And this is testing frequency versus SWR, which is what you'd most likely use as meter for. And as I mentioned before, there's a lot of functions it has now, and I'm not going to go over those functions. 
and this is the one I use most often with my meters. Um, and I do have the 259, so I did a set of measurements using my 259 for comparison. And this was on a HF um, dipole antenna. It's rated for 80 megahertz to 10 megahertz. So as you can see from this graph, first thing you'll notice is um, the two measurement sets that I made on the 266 track very well. The other thing you'll notice is in the dotted line here, which is the MFJ259 analyzer, um, tracks pretty closely to the 266. Now, I don't have a calibrated meter to determine which is correct, if either is correct, but I'm just looking at relative comparisons to see how they tracked. And as you can see from this graph, they tracked pretty close. The other thing I highlighted here is the uh, amateur band, since this antenna is supposed to be designed to work the amateur bands, the 80 meter, the 40 meter, 20 meters, 15 meters. So you should see the SWR go down, which is what you want. You want a low SWR, something close to 1.5. You should go, it just should see it go down at those particular frequencies, those being 80, 40, 20, and 10 meters. And sure enough, it seems to do a pretty good job. I'm talking of the antenna now. It does a pretty good job of being below the threshold of an SWR of 3.0, which is what you're looking for, and um, ex extremely low down at the bands, the ham bands themselves. So that's evidence that the meter is probably working properly and giving you accurate results. Plus, it what I want it for, it tells me this antenna is working pretty good, not especially great. I only use this antenna for receiving. I don't use it for transmitting. So an SWR down less than three is fine. So that's kind of a graphical representation of the test I did. Conclusion is it appears to be accurate. It does track the 259. Okay, now I did a little report card. Here's the report card. <clears throat> as far as many instruments in one, I give it an A+. Plus. It, as I said before, it does all those functions, a lot more functions than I'll ever use, and it does a good job of the function I will use, which is checking the SWRs on my antennas. The uh, It just took me a few... Uh, about a minute to understand the buttons, how to use the buttons and the layout. Uh, so I'll give that an A+. Plus. The operating manual was, I thought, a fairly good manual. Uh, didn't go into a super lot of detail, though it did provide some of the theory of what the uh, reading you were taking, what it meant. So I'll give that a B+. Plus. Construction, uh, I thought was very good. It was the chassis was a very heavy chassis. It was well put together. The display uh, worked real well, was real bright. Had no problems with that. Now, here's something that I gave it a low grade power. And the reason being, as I said before, is that if you're going to use batteries, and it suggests that you either use batteries or you go use a good external adapter so that the external AC adapter doesn't introduce any noise around the analyzer and the antenna. So installing the batteries is a little bit of a pain in that you have to open the case. Inside the case, there are two battery cases which you have to open, insert the batteries, put the covers back on those battery cases, put the cover back on the meter, and then you can use it. And I don't like to leave batteries in something that I don't use a lot or don't change the batteries a lot for fear of the batteries leaking. Sorry for the background noise. Uh, for fear of the batteries leaking and causing a real problem. So most instruments, most devices that use batteries 
have a little window that you can open so you can insert the batteries. This particular instrument, you have to open the whole case, which is similar to the old styles. The, my 259 was the same way. You had to remove four screws to get to where the battery um, adapter cartridge was to install batteries to put the cover back on and so on and so on. So I gave that a C. The, as far as the analyzer accessories, I don't have the accessories, so I did not give it a rating at all. Um, the no matter what one year guarantee, I gave it an A plus from what it sounds like. I have never had to use that on any of the stuff from MFJ, and I have a lot of stuff from MFJ. But the concept sounds great. Yes. The concept is that you can return within the first year the meter or any other things you buy from them, and they will either fix it or replace it, their choice, at no charge. You don't have to explain what happened or why, ha why, why you're returning it. Well, you should tell them why you're turning so they have an idea of what to look for. So if that's really true, and like I say, I have never used it, I would give that an A+. As far as the accuracy of the meter, now, the testing I did was not scientific. Number one, I just had, I just used one of my antennas. Um, the condition of that antenna was unknown. Um, I did have, have some really nice calibrated uh, meter to measure against. I just measured this meter against itself, taking two readings, and measured it against my 259. And the comparisons tracked quite well. So that's kind of the report card. Overall, I think the, uh, the meter is a good meter. Um, I certainly, uh, if I didn't have a 259, would buy this um, in a heartbeat because I really use um, these types of meters for checking my antennas, which I have a lot of antennas. So anyway, that's uh, my review today. Remember, this is Tom's Radio Room Show. You can subscribe, except somehow the S got deleted. You can upcribe to our videos on YouTube. My YouTube ID is hamrad88. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.